Now, in the last lesson, we saw inside Dartpad when we tried to change the variable that's holding a string, namely a string of characters, so basically text, and we tried to make it hold a number instead, or an integer, it wasn't really happy with that and it didn't want to do it for me. In order to understand what's going on, we have to understand Dart data types. Dart is what we call a statically typed language. What does that mean? Well, let's say we create a variable called myVar. It kind of acts a bit like one of those children's toys, which has different shaped holes and you have to fit the right shape inside the right hole. So for example, if I had something that was circular, then that would go through the circular hole. But if I had something that was a triangle, for example, then it won't go through the hole. And it's very similar when we have statically typed languages like Dart. Essentially, when I create a variable and I say that this variable can only hold pieces of text, then if I try to put a number into this variable, it won't accept it. It says, I can't mix up my types. What are these types that we're talking about? Well, they're essentially types of data. So we've got strings, which are essentially a string of characters, like a string of pearls, but we've strung together some characters instead. And in Dart, it's convention to have a single quote around a piece of text to represent a string. So we know that if we don't have single quotes, the computer will think that we're writing code. But if we do have the single quotes, then it'll know that we're trying to specify a string and it doesn't treat it as code. Now, there's also int, which is short for integer. And integers are basically just whole numbers. They can be positive or negative, but they can't have a decimal point. So if you wanted a decimal point in Dart, you would be working with something called a double. And this is a data type that allows you to have a decimal point and it will hold your data with all those numbers after the decimal point. Now, the last data type that you'll see commonly occurring is something called a bool, which is short for a Boolean. And it's a data type that can only hold one of two values, either true or false. And all of these data types together are known as primitive data types. So they're the most basic fundamental building blocks of any computer program. And we're going to use them as we build up more and more complex apps to store more and more complex data. Coming back to this idea of Dart being a statically typed language, it means that at the point when we create the variable, it will get a data type. And at a later date, we can change what's stored inside the variable as long as we don't change the data type. Heading back into our Dart pad, let's delete everything inside our main function. And this time, let's create some other variables. We're going to create a variable A, and we're going to assign this to the value hello. Now, at the moment, when I double click on this A variable, the Dart pad very helpfully points out that this is a string. This variable holds data that has to be of the type string. So hello works or bye or anything that's inside a set of single quotes will work just fine. But I can't change the data type of this variable. I can't, for example, change it to one, two, three. Now this is what we mean when we say that Dart is a statically typed language. If it was a dynamically typed language, and there's many of those out there, then this would be a perfectly valid thing to do. And it won't complain at all. It'll just silently suck it up and probably judge you, the human who's programming this, for being so indecisive. But it won't actually have a problem. And one of those languages is JavaScript. So if I straight up just take these two lines of code that we've already seen leads to all sorts of problems in Dart, and I put it inside a JavaScript playground such as JSBin, and if I console log, which is the JavaScript equivalent of print, the value of the variable a, then it'll happily print one, two, three in here. And if I put it here, then it'll print hello. So you can see that these are completely different data types and being able to change the data type 
that a variable holds makes JavaScript a dynamically typed programming language. Now, there are pros and cons of each type of programming language. Dynamically typed languages are more flexible. You can change things on the fly. Where statically typed programming languages are generally safer, you're less likely to run into problems because you forgot that, oh, A was actually meant to be a variable that only holds strings. It'll actually enforce it for you. Now, with Dart though, there is a way of turning it into a dynamic programming language, and it might actually trip you up at some point. Here in this line, we've created our variable A and we've set it to equal hello. But the reason why A knows that it should store a string is because it's inferring the data type from the value. Because it knows that the value that you've given it is a string, so therefore I must be a variable that holds strings. And similarly, if I changed A to hold a number, then it will be able to correctly infer that, oh, I'm actually a variable that holds integers. And it's very clever about this because as soon as you change the value to have a decimal point, then it knows, oh, actually, now I'm a variable that can hold doubles. But what if you did this? What if you create this variable and you don't give it a value at all. You just say, here's an empty box. It's called A. And at some point later on down the line, you decide to give it a value. Let's say e A equals one, two, three. Now, what do we think is the data type of A at this point? Now, at this point, A is now dynamic. And I can prove that because I can now set A to equal a string and it won't complain about this at all. And in fact, I can even print my string A into the console and everything will work just as you would expect for a dynamically typed programming language. So what's going on here? Well, Dart also has a data type called dynamic. And what this means is that you can create a variable that doesn't have to have a fixed data type. So if I was creating a variable and I wanted it to be a fixed string data type, then I would write string. If I wanted to create a variable that had an integer as the data type, then I would write int in the beginning instead of var. Now I can also write dynamic as the keyword, and now my variable C is dynamic. So if A is only able to hold strings, then I can put the value hello inside it, but I can't put the value one, two, three. This will generate an error. But if I had my variable created as a dynamic type, then I can put any sort of data in it. I can put one, two, three, and that will be just fine. It'll print out C without a problem. I can change C into a string if I wanted to. And now when I print the string, hello now gets printed. This is how dynamic types work. And when we created the var without giving it a value, we essentially created a dynamic type variable. So when I click on A, you can see its data type is dynamic. Because it didn't get a value, it couldn't work out what data type it was meant to hold. So it instead created a dynamic type. The important thing here to take away is that if you want to use Dart for its type safety, so ensuring that you don't mess up the data type and you don't accidentally put in the wrong thing that you didn't mean to, then it's best to create your variables with the data type to start with. So if we wanted to create a variable that holds a string, then we would write string a equals hello or whatever value you want. If we wanted to create a variable that's an int, then we would write int b equals one, two, three, or whatever it may be. And if you're creating a variable that you don't yet have a value for, say the score of the game 
as soon as the game starts won't really have a value. Well, then in that case, you can create an int and give it a name, but not give it a value. But this way, further down the line, C can never hold a string. It can't ever change its data type because when we created it, we already specified it. So in terms of best practice, I recommend to avoid using var and avoid using dynamic data types unless you actually need it for a reason, because it can lead to unexpected things happening in your code and it can lead to crashes down the line. So in this lesson, we talked about data types and the primitive data types that Dart has access to. And we also talked about how Dart can be a statically typed language because once you create a variable that has a fixed type, then it won't accept values that are of different data types. But we also saw how Dart can have this dynamic typing, which makes it a lot more similar to dynamically typed languages such as JavaScript. Now, the official Dart documentation says that Dart 2, so the latest version of Dart, is a statically typed language, which means that we can't switch around the data type of a variable once we've created it. But it does say that you can use this dynamic keyword if you want to be able to change the data type. But it does, of course, remove the benefits of a type safe language. So I recommend to avoid using the keyword var and avoid using dynamic types when you're working with Dart in order for your code to be less error prone. Now at this stage, it might not affect us very much, but later on, as our code gets more complex and does a lot more things, it becomes a lot easier to work with Dart as a statically typed language. But if you come from JavaScript or another language that has dynamic typing, just be aware that you can also do the same with Dart. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to head back to making our apps and we're going to learn about stateful and stateless widgets in Flutter.